Hello guys, welcome to today's live, I don't know why I already have two likes, that's really weird, but okay. Today. Today we are talking about um, what was done to the American buffalo, or the American bison rather, this time on live. We're also going to be hitting on the uh, Native American end of it a little bit. This is not my story to really tell, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway because it needs to be done. It needs to be said. Um, so we're going to start, and this may not take us the entire evening, so feel free to throw in your questions, your comments, whatever. Remember to be kind during this live. We are not here to, um, ah, remember we are not here to demonize anybody we're not here to put blame on anybody other than those people that it should be put on but that being said we're going to be looking at the extermination of the american bison and i think depending upon your age you might be really surprised by what you hear tonight so if one were to be transported in time and you were to travel into the Great Plains of North America around 10,000 years ago, you would see a very different version of the plains that you see today. Even 500 years ago, you would be very, very surprised. The American bison was pretty much spread from the coast, on the east coast, and through the Great Plains. I don't know how much into the uh, western coast they went, but I know they were in the eastern side and also through the Great Plains, up to the Rockies and into some parts of the Rockies. American bison at one time had a population of around 20 to 30 million individuals. But some sources do say that um, they would have lined up along with 60 million individuals. Uh, some people say that the, the habitat could not support that many individuals. Between the Great Plains and the Mississippi River, there were 30 different tribes. So between the Mississippi River and the Great Basin, which is in a sort of Utah area, the Great Plains, Between that area, there were 30 different tribes, and these tribes include the Plains Cree, Blackfoot, Crow, Dakota Sioux, Cheyenne, Mandan, Osage, Arapaho, Pawnee, Comanche, Comanche, Comanche Apache, Wichita, Lakota Sioux, Ogallala Sioux, Missouri, the Omaha, the Pawnee, 
And these tribes were dependent upon buffalo at some level for their economy, for their livelihood. So close was their dependence on the buffalo that this is what makes up the buffalo for the Native Americans. So the tanned hide, just the hide, the tanned hide, would have been used for backrest, bags, beds, belts, blankets, bridles, caps, cradles, doll mittens, or doll, doll mittens, dresses, leggings, moccasin tops, pillows, pouches, ropes, shirts, sweat lodge, sweat lodge cover, tapestries, teepee liners, teepee covers, and winter robes. Yeah, we're not, yeah, they were. And they, they may have had buffalo at some point, but the eastern buffalo or bison were wiped out a lot sooner than the western. The hair or the fur of the bison were used to make bracelets, braided ropes, doll stuffing, hair pieces, headdresses, horse halters, medicine balls, moxkin lining, ornaments, pad, pad fillers, pillow fillers. The meat would have been used for immediate use, dried meat jerky, pessimum. If you don't know what that is, um, we can talk about that a little bit later. Sausages. The tail was used for decorations as a fly swatter, a knife sheath, um, medicine, a switch, and whips. The dong or the dung uh, was used for diaper powder. I'm assuming they crushed it up and made it into diaper powder. It was also dried and used for fuel, meaning they burned it. The hoof sheath was used to make containers, glue, rattles, spoons, and wind chimes. Stomach contents were used for medicines and paints. The dewclaw. Now, the dewclaw... Where is my bison? Bison, bison, bison. 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 Where are you? I don't know. Because I can't see. Nope. And nope. And nope. Oh. Duh. So the dew claw... if they had one, would be on the back. On a deer. The dew claw is here. Right there. Um... And that was used to make glue, rattles, and wind chimes also. The bladder. Um, this was used for food pouches, medicine bags, and water container. The scrotum was used for containers and for rattles. The gall uh, was used for yellow paint. Stomach liner was used for a cooking vessel and again as a water container. The rawhide was used for mask, cinches, ornaments, rattles, sheaths, snowshoes, 
trunks, water, horse water trough, moxkin soles, containers, quivers, ropes, shields, splints, lariats, buckets, caps, drums, rafts, saddles, shrouds, and straps. Tendons and muscle. The ties for the arrows, drawstrings for the bows, cinches, and sinew. The foot bones were used as a teething toy, toy buffalo or horses. Uh, what's the rawhide? What is it used for, or what is it? I'm assuming it is the... Raw, I don't want to know what... Hold on. The Plains Indians had a abundant source of hides in the buffalo. Uh, they hunted, but as they were nomadic, they still had little opportunity to tan skins, or rawhides, was prepared by cleaning and dehairing the skin, and then by stretching it, it allowed it to dry in the sun. So that's what the rawhide was. Not totally tanned, but sort of tanned. The liver was used for food and as a tanning agent. The brains were used for food and to and for hide preparations the blood was used for paints puddings and soups the beard uh if you don't know what the beard of a buffalo is uh this is the beard uh that's going to be used to make ornaments the tongue of the buffalo uh, was choice meat. The rough side of the buffalo was also of the tongue was also used as a comb. The teeth were used to make ornaments. The fat of the buffalo was used for soaps, tallow, tanning, hair grease, filled pipe sealer, and cosmetic aids. The skull was used as an altar, a dehairing tool, and for the sun dance. Horns of the buffalo were used to make arrow points, cups, fire carrier. So once you started a fire, you would use the horn to carry the fire to your fire pit or your fire circle. Headdresses, ladies' medication, ornaments, powder horn, signals, spoons, and toys. Now, the bones, sort of interesting. Uh, they use the bones to make arrowheads, awls, so you would sharpen them so that you could poke through different items. Uh, flushing tools, eating utensils. Game dice, jewelry, knives, painting tools, pipes. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, scrapers, saddle trees, sleds, shovels, splints, toys, and war clubs. I would imagine the femur of a buffalo would probably make a really 
wicked um, weapon. So these tribes that we just, or the tribes that we discussed and then their uses gave you an idea of just how important this animal was to these tribes. The 6th Cavalry was reported waiting six days for a buffalo herd to move so that they could get past them. And I'm sure this is not the only account of people having to wait on them. So the U.S. wanted the land that these tribes lived on. And in order to get the land, they had to remove the people that lived on the land. And the army knew that if they could take out the buffalo, that the Plains tribes would eventually have to move to the reservation because they would not have the food that they needed. In order to do this, the government decided to get rid of the American bison. Uh, General Sheridan talked to Congress into supplying guns and ammo to hunters so that they could kill the buffalo. They also passed out free ammo to hunters. And we'll talk about that again a little bit later. Uh, in 1873, the acting secretary of the interior said that the civilization... Lovely. The Indians used all of an animal, no waste. Absolutely. And we have a message that I need to look at. Maybe. Oh, um, Carol. Um, what you just typed in. Yeah, you can't say that. At least not in live. It got flagged. So, it's okay. Um, the civilization of the Indian is impossible while the buffalo remains on the plains. It's okay, you can get mad. Um, the killing of the bison was central to the plans made by Grant's administration's peace policy. Uh, they believed that um, there could be peace on the plains, but in order to have that peace, you needed to kill the animals and get them dependent, get the people dependent on the government supplies for food. In order to fulfill their plans, the army would at some point provide free ammo for hunters. Um, yeah, another fail by our government to step in and stop the slaughter happened in 1874 when Congress, Congress tried to save the bison, but President Grant vetoed that bill because the people were opposed to the bill. By vetoing this bill, he believed that it would reduce the Indian Wars because the tribes would adopt would would adopt a farming lifestyle, meaning that once they were in the reservations, instead of going and hunting and gathering, they would begin to plant gardens and harvest the crops. Remarkably, in 1874, there had been more than 4 to 5 million bison killed in a three-year span. So just three years, three years, they had managed to wipe out 4 to 5 million bison. Sadly, by 1902, less than 100 roamed the plains. And sadly... Grant came into conflict with the idea of Manifest Destiny and his peaceful civilizing of our indigenous people. He believed that they could be assimilated 
into our white culture via education, language, religion, and eventual citizenship. Um, I definitely do not agree with any of this. I think it's hogwash. But first, we had to break their tribal, nomadic, hunting, and religious lifestyle. So basically, we had to take away everything that made them basically who they are. It was suggested that when, oh yeah, they did. Um, it was suggested that when the indigenous people of the plains got the horse, that it helped them in seek in hunting and seeking the bison, thus beginning the downfall of the bison. So, there are some people who say that it had nothing that. There was more to losing the bison than just hunters. Um, I've even read accounts that you could walk a hundred miles along the railway and never step off of a carcass. And that's sad. So yeah, um, basically the killing of the bison was basically done to get the... Plains natives, the indigenous people off the plains and into reservations so that the land could be farmed and whatnot. Um, it's not fair. Um, well, the real they were shooting bison from the from the railway. Um, and I'm sure that was a part of it. It helped the um, railway because they're not having bison charging the trains and whatnot. But there was more to it than just the railroads. The government had their hands in that. So, yeah. For better or for worse, um, well, there is no better. Really, there's not. Uh, not in this case. And we, we still are not, um, to the point that we were at in their population. Um... When you look at bison numbers. And I'm not even sure what the current population is. Um, I do know that. Things are maybe better. But not too much better. They are now allowed. And we're seeing. Uh, the old ways coming back. To a certain extent. The younger generations are spearheading uh, the languages. I believe on Duolingo. Um, Navajo, for sure.
you can at least learn Navajo. I don't know about any others. But, um, yeah. It's not a secret. That information is out there. Um, yeah. And what, what's important to know is we breed buffalo. Um, some maybe for release. Some for food, because I know the the tribes have heard some of them, uh, and they should. But, and I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure that some of what happened uh, was not, you know, back and forth. Sort of like, you know, you do me wrong, so I'm going to do wrong by you. But, yeah. We, we owe it to ourselves and to our grandchildren to do what we can to improve the habitat for these animals. Let's see. Sorry, I was getting a call. So, um, I'm not sure that this is the entire speech. But I do want to read... I want to read the, there was a, a chief, for those of you who don't know, who was called Chief Seattle. And I want to read part of his talk. And this talk was given um, in 1854. And it says, basically, where am I starting? I'm not going to read the whole speech, but I am going to read at least portions of it. So, the white chief says that the big chief at Washington 
sends us greetings of friendship and goodwill. This is kind of him, for we know that he has little need of our friendship in return. His people are many. They are like the grass that covers vast prairies. My people are few, and they resemble the scattering trees of a storm-swept plain. Now, these, these, his tribe would have been in Oregon, Washington. They are the Squamish. I hope I pronounced that right. If I didn't, I do apologize. The great, and I presume, good white chief, meaning they're talking about the president, sends us words that he wishes to buy our land, but is willing to allow us enough to live comfortably. Hi, Brandon. Thank you. I will not dwell on nor mourn over our untimely decay, nor reproach my pale-faced brothers with hastening it, as we too may have been somewhat to blame. So he's saying, yeah, um, our hand in this, we might have had something to do with what's going on. Our good father in Washington, for I presume he is now of our father as well as yours, since King George has moved his boundaries further north, our great and good father, I say, sends us words that if we do as he desires, he will protect us. So basically, the president has said, hey, if you will go and get on the reservation, we're going to protect you. But if you don't, perhaps too bad. His brave warriors will be to us as a bristling wall of strength, and his wonderful ships of war will fill our harbors so that our ancient enemies far to the northward will cease to frighten our women, children, and old men. Then in reality he will be our father and his children. But we can, but can that ever be? Your God is not our God. Your God loves your people and hates mine. He folds his strong protecting arms lovingly about their pale face and leads him by the hand as a father and as a father leads an infant son. But he has forsaken his red children. If they really are his, our God, the great spirit, seems also to have forsaken us. Your God makes your people wax stronger every day. Um, I'm going to move on um, because I don't want to dwell on that part of it. Because I want to, I want to move on from that. A few more moons, a few more winters, and not one of the descendants of the mighty host that once moved over this broad land or lived in happy homes, protected by the great spirit, will remain to mourn over the graves of a people once more powerful and hopeful than yours. So that's Seattle talking about the, the tribes. But why should I mourn at the untimely fate of my people? Tribe follows tribe, nation follows nation. Like the waves of the sea, it is the order of nature, and regret is useless. Your time of decay may be distant, but it will surely come, for even the white man whose God walked and talked with him as a friend to friend cannot be exempt from the common destiny. We may be brothers after all. We will see. We will ponder your proposition, and when we decide, we will let you know. 
but should be accepted, I here and now make this condition that we will not be denied the privilege without molestation of visiting at any time the tombs of our ancestors, friends, and children. Every part of this, say, of this soil is sacred in the estimation of my people. Every hillside, every valley, every plain and grove has been hallowed by some sad or happy events in days long vanished. Even the rocks, which seem to be dumb and dead as the, as the swelter in the sun along the silent shore. Hello, Valentino. Um, and he goes on to say, where is it? Events connected with the lives of my people and the very dust upon which you now stand responds more lovingly to their footsteps than yours because it is rich with the blood of our ancestors, and our bare feet are conscious of the sympathetic touch. Our departed braves, fond, fond mothers, glad, happy-hearted maidens, and even the little children who lived here and rejoiced here for a brief season, will love those somber solitudes, and at eventide they greet shadowy returning spirits. And when the last rud man shall have perished, and the memory of my tribe shall become a myth among the white men, those shores will swarm with the invisible dead of my tribe. And when your children's children think themselves alone in the field, the store, the shop, upon the highway, or in the silence of the pathless woods, they will not be alone. In all the earth, there is no place dedicated to solitude. At night, when the streets of your cities and villages are silent, and you think them deserted, they will throng with the returning host that once filled them and still love this beautiful land. The white man shall never be alone. Let him be just and deal kindly with my people. For the dead are not powerless. Dead, did I say? There is no death, only a change of worlds. Oh. Well. Okay, I get it. Welcome back. Welcome back. That's not the one I wanted. This is the one I wanted, but I don't know how accurate this one is. Um, but I am going to read this. Because it's an extension of the buffalo. And again... I'm not sure that this people would have had Buffalo, but we're going to read through this anyway. The president in Washington sends words that he wishes to buy our land, but how can he buy or sell the sky, the land? The idea is strange to us. If we do not own the freshness of the air and the sparkle of the water, how can you buy them? So basically, um, my understanding is, is yes, there were skirmishes among the different tribes, but there was sort of a, an understanding that you didn't own the earth. Uh, every part of the earth is sacred to my people. Every shining pine needle, every sandy shore, every mist in the dark woods, every meadow, every humming insect, all are holy in the memory and experience of my people. We know the sap which courses through the trees, as we know the blood that courses through our veins. We are part of the earth, and it is part of us. The perfumed flowers are our sisters. The bear, the deer, the great eagle, these are our brothers. The rocky crest, the dew in the meadow, 
and the body heat of the pony and man all belong to the same family. The rivers are our brothers. They quench our thirst. They carry our canoes and feed our children. So you must give the rivers the kindness that you would give any brother. If we sell you, if we sell you our land, remember that the air is precious to us. That the air shares its spirit with all the, with all the life that it supports. The wind that gave your grandfather his first breath also received his last sigh. The wind also gives our children the spirit of life. So if we sell you our land, you must keep it apart and sacred as a place where man can go to taste the wind that is sweetened by the meadow flowers. Will you teach your children what we have taught our children, that the earth is our mother, and what befalls the earth befalls all the sons of the earth. So that is important because as I've said in many, many lives previously to this, um, we, we do not own anything on the earth even though we say we do. Um, we are not the rulers of the land. We don't hold dominion over the land or its animals or its plants or the waters. We are only, only stewards. That is it. This we know. The earth is does not belong to man, and man belongs to the earth. All things are connected like the blood that unites us all. Men did not weave the web of life. He is merely a strand in it. And whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. Again, there's that web, so that if you pluck one strand off that web, it's gone. It can never be put back. So, if if the buffalo was totally removed from that web, it would have been gone. That would have been it. And on some level, that would have impacted us. One thing we one thing we know, our God is also your God, which is different than what was in the last one. The earth is precious to him, and to harm the earth is to heap contempt on its creator, which I find that striking. Your destiny is a mystery to us. What will happen when the buffalo are all slaughtered, the wild horses tamed? What will happen when the secret corners of the earth are heavy with the scent of many men, and a view of the ripe hills is blotted with talking wires? Uh, remember, the telegram came first, and that would have been wires upon wires, sort of like we have with the telephone wires. Um, yeah. Where will the thicket be? Gone. Where will the eagle be? Gone. And what is to say goodbye? And what is to say goodbye to the swift pony? And then hunt? The end of living and the beginning of survival. So, basically, you know, we have ponies. And we had the hunt. But what's going to happen when that's gone? And basically, he says, the end of living and the beginning of survival. When the last red man has vanished with this wilderness, and his memory is only the shadow of a cloud moving across the, par the prairie, will these shores and forests still be here? 
Will there be any of the spirit of my people left? We love this earth as a newborn loves its mother's heartbeat. So, if we sell you our land, it is we. It is as we have loved it. Care for it as we have cared for it. Hold in your mind the memory of the land as it is when you receive it. Preserve the land for all children and love it as God loves us. As we are part of the land, you too are part of the land. And this earth is precious to us. It is also precious to you. One thing we know, there is only one God. No man, be he red man or white man, can be a part. We are all brothers after all. Now, that being said, I do not know if this part of the speech that I just read is actually uh, written by uh, Chief Seattle. Presumably, the generally accepted version of the above speech was published in the Irish Times on June 4, 1976. However, many people now believe that the speech was actually written by a Hollywood screenwriter in the 1970s. Um, so, yes. So again, um, not quite the, uh, the first speech was definitely his speech, but this last one, even it hits hard, uh, but it is not, um, it's not quite the, uh, the same. So what I was reading is attributed to Chief Seattle of the Squamish people. But I think it still hits. So what we what we did to the buffalo and what we did to the to the people of the plains. Um, it's going to come back on us. I thought... Uh -uh. I thought you Okay, we're we're not going to argue. I thought you said yesterday that you were Yeah, I don't, I personally, I don't like the word Native American, personally, that's just me. I would rather it be indigenous people over, yeah, I don't know. And I have not been good in following live, so I don't. Oh, well, some... 
the the people that lived on the plains were nomadic. I don't know if other tribes were as nomadic, but the the people that lived on the plains, the Apache, the the Cree, the um Arapaho, they very early on moved. They they had to use what they had because they didn't have a choice. They had to make do with what they had. And once, sort of, once, at least my understanding is, once the, once our, um, once the indigenous people were put on, once our tribe, once the tribes were put onto the reservations, it became a fight for survival in some regards. And maybe I'm speaking out of dirt. I don't know. But there there was definitely things done during this time that never should have happened. Me? Me, Valentino? I apologize. Oh. I don't know what was said because I didn't see it. They they pretty much did use a lot of the parts of the buffalo. Yes, the the different the different tribes did use different items. The so what what we're discussing, Valentino, are more the tribes of the Great Plains. Mainly the, um, the Blackfoot, the Crow, the Dakota Sioux, the Cheyenne, the Mandan, the Osage, Arapaho, the Pawnee, Coman Comanche, the Apache, the Wichita, the Lakota, the Missouri, the Omaha, the Pawnee, basically those tribes. Well, even, even during that period of time, there were still people that were using buffalo. It was, they, until treaties were signed and they were unfortunately placed on reservations, they would have lived pretty much how they wanted. And and I, for one, I it was craziness. And it's in some regards it still is craziness. 
Uh oh. Uh, please make sure that we are being nice because I can't have. I can't have ugliness on lives, so, because that will affect me being able to do lives. So, keep it calm and nice. And that goes for everybody, including me. So, if we can change the subject if we need to, But both sides need to need to come down, calm down. Easy for me to say, I know, but Sorry guys, I got disconnected. Um Ay, 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 guys. I can't with the lights. Um, so, yeah, so the point of this live was just to discuss basically what happened to the buffalo. To the rest would hurt. So... Like I said before, it is not my fight, but, um, yeah, we, okay, I'm tired of the light. Whoa, no. Valentino, it's it's cool. Um so I will be back to doing the Holy moly guys. I will be back to doing regular shorts. I will be filming those starting tomorrow. And then during the week, there will be some change in scenery. At Sorry, I got disconnected. Luckily, I'm back. Is everybody else back? Um, ch -ch 
lives. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow's live is um don't remember sorry y'all I keep having issues Tomorrow, I believe we are doing trivia night. But I can't remember. Go ahead, Valentino. I'm listening. Yeah, I got disconnected. Again. Um, Thursdays are going to be busy because, well, those are the days that Monday, yeah. So Thursdays are going to be my day to work. Why can't, why won't it let me? Evidently, somebody's not happy with my topic tonight. Curly Doc here. Thursdays, yeah, basically because I'm going to be super busy. With lives. I have all of the videos to film yet. I cannot find what lives are for the upcoming week. That does not make me happy. Did I post them somewhere? Probably not. View my channel, community, M O A S I. What is that? So, Saturday, I believe... Oh, okay. I don't have a cat. I have plastic cats. Um... Tuesday night is going to be my nature experiences. And Friday... Holy moly. Friday will... It's posted. I just don't remember what it is. Hello, everybody that's out there. Um, Hope you're having a great Friday.
so bear with me, everybody, while I get adjusted to trying to set up a new schedule for myself. Um, because things just are not happening. So assuming that I'm at the bap the baptism tomorrow, um, let me see if I have. Oh, Monday or Tuesday's live or Friday's next Friday's live, whichever it is, we are talking about what are vertebrates. So the different types of, of vertebrates is what we're doing. The only cats I have are the small ones. Unfortunately, no live stuff. Not anymore. I do have the beginnings of our perks made up or the my perks made up for um, subscribers or members to the channel, which will be different. Um, and I think I went over this Tuesday, but I'm going to go over it again. And I am just a talking head. Ay, ay, ay. Um, so this is how it's going to work. First level, uh, um, father and his sons. Um, first level is early access to videos. That's the first level. Second level, members. We'll have member-only lives with slightly different content at a different time um, than my usual lives, plus early access to videos. The third and final perk Yeah, I do visit Willow, that's true. Um, and the third and final perk will be exclusive videos just for members Hopefully something a little bit different, uh, plus the other two um, perks. So, Valentino, Willow is my sister-in-law's cat, my brother's cat, and I do go down Monday, Monday and Wednesdays, no, Monday and Thursdays I go down and I feed the dogs, and a lot of times in doing so, she gets fed, and then um, a little bit of playtime, usually. And then I'm there all day, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I get to see her then. Didn't get any playtime with her today. Didn't even get to play with Cyrus today. But I did play with Ivy, so Ivy is a German Shepherd, and Cyrus is a pit bull, a very loving pit bull, by the way. Hello to everybody else whose names I do not know. If you were, in, if you got something out of today's live, um. Give it a like and subscribe if you're not. Um, I will be going live tomorrow at 3 o'clock. We are playing trivia. Assuming I can find my book. Uh, that's what we're doing. 
Um, it's going to be a surprise. I'm not telling anybody what type of trivia we're doing. But it will be a surprise. So you come in. Usually what we do is you come in. You answer the questions. Participate in the questions. And then when the live is done, we're done. Oh, we are way over time, guys. So I am going to say good night. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Valentino. Thanks for coming in. Um, see you next. Hopefully see you tomorrow for live. Uh, video will be up tomorrow for live. Tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Um, and it's going to be um, the history of the lima beans. So not anything really exciting, but watch it in the background as you're doing something else. Give it a like. Let me know in the comments section if you are coming in late. What is Shima? I'm not sorry. I'm not sure I pronounced it right. Is that family member? Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. I can't promise that I will remember that. But. I'm learning something. It, hopefully I remember. Oh, sorry. Um. I'm going to say goodnight because I have to get work done. So, I will talk to you later. Have a good one. Tomorrow, live is at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. And like I said, we are playing trivia, so nothing super exciting. Um, yes. Yes, be kind to each other. Remember to never give up on yourselves and always keep learning. And I will see you tomorrow. Good night. Maybe. There it goes.